you got me crying over here, bro. Like, I'm in literal tears right now. It gives me chills, bro. bro. First, I want to say that I am honored as well as proud to be in your circle, man. You, you're you not only an inspiration for the city, but to watch you come from when we first met to where you at right now, bro. You know. Is crazy, man. You know. Congratulations on the new ride, bro. Let's take it back for a minute, man. Okay. Let's take it back for a minute. I know we talked before, but uh, when did all of this hit you to to start up a tow truck business? Because you're a one-man army over there. Okay. It started when I met a gentleman by the name of Ed Lawson. Okay. And that was about, uh, about 20 years ago. I was working for someone else. They were paying me $50 a day. Uh, I was taking cars up to Ed Lawson for him to process. And he said, you deserve better than that. He said, I'm going to pay you $100 a day to come work for me. And then I'm going to show you what they have not been telling you. And I said, what do you mean? He said, I'm going to show you and teach you the business. They just want you to tow for them. I don't even want you to tow for me, but it's something special about you that I like. And he took me under his wing. Everybody thought I was Ed's son because we look alike. And he loaned me the money to buy my first tow truck. It was a 1978 Ford. 1978 with a granny four speed in it old hog with the, with the smoke stacks out the size of the bed but that was my first time experiencing being on my own and having somebody care enough about me to where they said you can do this and i believe in you so that's when it first started i had a scrap business in my early 30s off of that it was around 27 years old um and then I let the scrap business go because I was into, into music real tough and I shouldn't have let it go. But nevertheless, I told myself when I come back, I'm going to make sure I have, I'm coming back new. And I promised myself that because those were old records, old trucks that I was driving. And it taught me the valuable lessons about towing and about how you had to think on your feet, you know, stuff. You didn't have all the equipment all the time. You just had to make it happen. That made me a better tower learning it that way before learning it on new equipment, you know, because I come from the junkyard and that's where that's just what it is. I broke my I uh, cut my teeth in the junkyard, you know, and that taught me everything I needed to know. Man, shout out to Ed, man. I, I I I came across him a few times. That's that's the old gentleman that used to be up on miles, right? Yeah, yeah. But I learned. I initially learned from a guy named uh, Bobby Houston. He was the first one to show me how to hook a car because uh, I was driving trucks out of the airport at the time and I lost my job out there. And I had to ask myself, what size truck? You can drive a big truck, but what else could you do besides moving freight? And I said, you can drive a, a tow truck, track tow truck. And I was making $8 an hour, um, like a hundred and something dollars a week, 160 something dollars a week. And it was really, really trying times, but I pushed through it and I learned and I, I, I had integrity and those things, how I've been successful all the way up to this point is because of those things. People, tr I'm, I'm trusted. So, you know, it's just God given, man. You're, you're, you're vested as well. Vested. You, your first truck, well, that was your first truck. Your second truck, which was the, which is the now 350. And you had that for a, quite a while. You picked that up from uh, from Chicago. Second truck was a after that that seventy eight Ford. I had bought a um, like an eighty eight Ford from my guy Burger. Burger had a truck looked real good, a wheel lift. It had the um, four wheel drive, all that stuff in it. it. Had the wheel lift. I was running a sling truck initially, an old time sling truck, and uh, it's hard. Those are hard to run and hard not to do damage. So I did. My sling, I ran, I made a lot of money in that old record. But then Bur I bought one from Burger. That was my second truck. So after that is when I did pretty good in the scrap business. And then I stepped away from it for music and uh, came back to it uh, probably about 10 years later. And that's when I bought the, uh, that, that 16 came from Raleigh, North Carolina, from uh, 
Capital Ford at Rally, North Carolina. Okay, so the one the one that you just now got you pass that on to somebody else. That's the one we're talking about, right? Yeah, the white record. The, one, the white one. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that one, that one did you well, bro. Like, yeah, man, I can't complain. Like that one, that one did you well. Like, how well did that that one treat you, man? That one treat you like nothing other. That one got me to the point of building my first record. I mean, my first tow truck, and which I chose a flatbed because I'm a flatbed guy, you know. But I love my records. I love my records. I got to get another one. But um, I had to get this this bed out of my out of my system. You know, it's like I, I got to get a bed. So, you know, it's larger in size inconvenience, but at the same time, it's a flat bed. So, you know, yeah. So that's where we at, man. So the white record going on that's, to somebody that's else. That's going to be a good truck and, somebody. And, and, and the new one, the Ram. Tell, tell us about the Ram, bro. That that looks too mean. When are you going to get it up detailed and everything? I got an appointment today for uh, to see the estimates on the detailing. So, I, you know, I got to, you know, everything's scheduled. I got to get a truck inspection today. So your entrepreneurs and people that are just getting out here understand that um, it's very hard work. The paperwork alone takes up a lot of time. So you have to grind double time to be able to have the time to do your paperwork. Otherwise, you have to pay somebody to do that. A lot of my LLC stuff, filings, federal filings, I did all that stuff. I didn't pay anybody to do it because I had to learn it. You know what I mean? Because you can't have somebody running your operation and you don't know the ins and outs. So in the future, I may have somebody take it over, but I'll know what to look for on the audit side of things if they're not doing their job. You know, so I had to learn it first. Otherwise, I don't really want it. You know what I mean? So uh, that's why I advise anybody that's getting into trucking, Get your LLC done. Every apostrophe, every dot has to be in every filing. So I suggest not to put apostrophes and dots just in case you forget it. So make the spelling very simple because I had to refile because of one apostrophe and you have to repay. It's just a whole mess. So that's my suggestion to anybody that's going to do it on their own. And you can go to all the websites and it's self-explanatory. Just follow the steps. When you get confused, go through the steps again until you get it right. And you'll get it right. If I do, if I can do it, you guys can do it too. There's no doubt about it. I have that much confidence in everybody else as well. That's what's up, man. Like when I first started and when I first learned the roadside business, I I kind of, I did it the right way, but it was also the wrong way because right. I didn't get an LLC. I did a, I, I did more of a doing business as type deal. So yeah. I use my social security, but as I learned farther along the line, it was better to separate Correct. my personal social security and Correct. get the business its own social security. Correct. And that's the yeah, yeah, IN, yeah, the tax LLC, yeah. the INN number, yeah. the tax ID numbers yeah. and stuff like that. Right. So if and when I step in, step back into the business, which is still a bit part of that inspiration for me to I do that. that. I know how long it took me to, to not only get vetted, but also to get that trust of these uh, contractors that we're contracted with. Yeah. How long did it take you to get uh, to get the contracts, and how long did it take you to get a, a a good rapport with them? Because they always want you to, oh, okay, well, you can do this tow for five for you do the tow for fifty dollars, but they want you to do it for twenty five dollars. But how do you stand tall and be like, no, I, I I can't do that. This is what you do. This is one of my. Me and my uncle, God, God bless his soul, he's one of the wolves on the, of the three wolves on the side of my truck. We always say we don't work for crackhead prices, okay? That's for one thing. For two, my saying is either you're going to pay for the damage or you're going to pay for the quality. You can have it your way, whatever you choose to do. So I don't. I make sure I value my time, and it's very risky. It's dangerous work, so I can't work for free. You know, I just can't do it uh, if I value who I am and I'm, I'm confident in who I am. To answer your question, to get vetted and people to trust me, that came through consistency of being in positions and situations to where they'll see if you can be trusted. And I did not blink. 
So when you're around people that know the industry that you're getting into or the field, make sure that they can trust you if their life dependent on it, because they don't have to have you around showing you what they're showing you. And they're trusting in you that you're going to protect that. It's, it's the code. You, you have to follow the code. If you don't follow the code, I don't care if you're flipping burgers and you want to have a, the best burger in America. You're not going to ever get there because the burger men are not going to sh share the information with you. They're not going to show you how to cut costs. Those are trade secrets. And, and people in those industries keep those trade secrets uh, because you're not worthy of them. A lot of people aren't worthy of them, you know, because they know you, they, they can see something that you're going to you're side eyeing something. You're looking at the books, which you ain't supposed to wait till he show you the books. He's going to show you, you know, you just have to have to be real with it all the way real with it, man. Otherwise it'll be detected. You know, you have to be one of my words is authentic authenticity. You have to have that. Now, of course, being in the toll business, we do come across uh, a multitude of strange things, inappropriate people, crazy stuff that we have seen. My one of my stories is that I came to do a lockout for a gentleman and he 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 just wasn't just wasn't a good dude. And I just I, yeah. I, I looked at him. I said, I'm sorry. I wasn't I wasn't going to stand here and take all this abuse from you, all this back talk. And I just left him. Yeah. What was the situation like that for you as far as towing somebody? I don't leave many people. OK, because I'm able to kind of put a little ice on a hot situation. So I have rolled with people and had my antennas up. That has happened quite frequent, you know, often, uh, whether it be, you know, street dudes, you know, that then got into some mess and uh, they kind of use the service to, you know, come get them. And you don't know until you get there that the guy what's going on. Um, but I, I'm a man of God. So people that are in distress, I'm coming there to help them people, regardless of what happens. Older people, women crying, you know, uh, one lady got locked up when I dropped her off at home because she had left her kids at home uh, for for a little hiatus. And the hiatus didn't go right, and her car broke down, and she had to wait until the morning. So the kids was there, you know, three kids or something like that was there for 12 hours without their mom. But their mom was out there partying and drunk and all of that type of stuff. You know, it was a horrible situation. She got locked up as soon as I pulled up. You know, so there's there's gonna be circumstances like that, but again, I'm I'm there to I'm the problem solver. I'm like the fox on uh, uh, what do you call that uh, Pulp Fiction. You know, when the fox comes through, clean everything up, have a nice day, you yes, get your change of clothes, yes, boom, give you another car yes, to go. Sir. Yeah, I'm like the fox. You're Jimmy, right? This is your house. Sure is. I'm Winston Wolf. I solve problems. Good, we got one. So I heard. May I come in? Uh, yeah, please do. You must be Jules. You know, so that's how my approach is with it. You know, because I take the industry very serious. So one thing I want to tell everybody, I don't want to be long-winded, uh, but the way that I did it, because I didn't have bags and bags of money, I first got my credit sky high, and then I saved me a decent down payment uh, for the truck. I worked two and a half, three jobs for three years. And I put everything towards uh, that goal. And, you know, it, it paid off. You know, so you have to position yourself and be strategic. But it all started with my personal credit. And then I, I co-signed for my business with my personal credit. You know, if you don't have bags of money, because a lot of people don't have that. I didn't have access to that. Nah, we we all don't. We, mm -hmm. we all don't. I know I did. But I'm telling you, that's how you do it. When you, you don't be denied. You find your way. That's the whole key, you know. Yep. That's what's up, man. Well, listen, man. What's uh, go go ahead and shout out the name of the of the tow company, man. All right, much shout out to Wolfpack Towing, Cleveland, Ohio. We tow it like we own it. Tow it like we own it, man. Again, very inspiring story. I'm. It, it's my pleasure to to know you for as long as we know. It's it's a little bit over ten years now, right? A little bit longer than that, right? About fifteen years. Yes, man. And guys, when I was telling you, these are the people that I be talking about that I know, that I come across. 
These are the people I look towards and listen to and get inspired and get a, get valuable information. Yeah. Everything this man has said, everything this man has done is valuable. And he and and again, he is vetted. He's vetted throughout the city of Cleveland. So Bless. again, man, it's my definitely my definite pleasure of having you in my circle, man. It's an honor. I appreciate you. All right, I thank you for the time, bro. We out, baby. Let's get it. Uh, in too deep like Omar. Make me want to track you down and hit the track hawk with the crowbar. I knew we wouldn't go far, like we ran out of ethanol. Now your nosy ass mama want to get involved. When I met you, you was on the couch with the plastic. She need an Emmy. Bitch so dramatic. Now your baggage got me on edge like jagged. Fucking up my homes. Look, Patrick. You swift to jump shift like a chief. Been crying on my line like Therese. But it ain't all you, it's me. Blame it on the things I went through.